Hey everyone, it's Anthony Cazenza with the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. Enjoy this set of interviews recently done by our co-host John Sheeran. These interviews include hearing from the likes of Bengals head coach Zach Taylor, quarterback Andy Dalton, running back Travion Williams, wide receiver Josh Malone, offensive lineman Billy Price, and linebacker Jermaine Pratt. These interviews also feature other members of Cincinnati Bengals blogs and podcasts. This is the type of content we love to bring you and will continue to do so during the preseason, regular season, and off season. Thanks for listening. To get into those spots. Yeah, I think there's more of an emphasis on it. Um, you know, that's one thing we, we felt like in years past, we just in scramble drill situations. We we weren't everybody went in tune with okay where you need to be, what spots you should need to work. Because I mean there is uh, there is some technique and you know art to the scramble drill. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think we we worked on it some more last year than than we did before, and um, it, it showed with, with some of the plays that we were able to make. How do you work on that? Is that something that you guys have drills for, and you practice, or is it something yeah, that you we, really we, need to get Yeah, you can for? definitely drill it, and we, we talk about it in meetings and stuff. Okay, if you're in certain spots, once the play breaks down, this is where you need to work. This is what you need to try to do. What's the biggest difference for you between having a coach who is a quarterbacks coach than like Marvin, who's a defensive guy? Yeah, this is my first time in my career to have a uh, an offensive minded coach, and so uh, with Zach, Zach's got his hand on everything that we're doing offensively, and so. Uh, with him calling the plays and I mean it's it's been good for us to just uh, talk every time we've, we've got something or I see something I'm always giving my opinion on okay well I've done this before I've done that and um, so it's been great I think he's he's been very creative in everything that we're doing and I think we're going to be uh, be explosive this year. Do you have any favorite pieces of the new offense that you're really excited for? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is we can spread it around it's, it's not just focused on one guy um, so I think with the talent that we have, I think that, uh, that that's a good thing. You can't key on one guy. Obviously, uh, we're, we're missing AJ. You know, wish he, wish he was in there. And uh, teams really have to focus on him. But uh, I think with everything that we're doing, we can really spread it around. How's uh, Josh and Co- Cody been like replacing AJ and John in practice so far? Yeah, I think this has been. Uh, obviously, it, it, we would want AJ and John out there, but uh, just the experience that they're getting, the, the more reps they have, the better they're. Uh, they've been so uh, I feel like they, they've done really well and uh, you know just building that trust and chemistry with them you have any particular strengths that you think translate really well to this new style of offense or is it similar to anything you've done in the past I feel like I've heard some mention that is kind of like what you did with you some pieces of what you did with you um, I would I honestly I wouldn't compare it to anything that we did with you it's uh, it's a lot different I think you know, this offense, you get the ball in your hands quick, you throw on the move and stuff that I feel like I do well. And so um, I, I feel like that stuff really fits with everything that we're doing. Is that extending plays and scrambling? Has that been the biggest thing that you, that they've been harping on you to improve in this overall scheme? Or what's, like, the biggest thing that they've been harping on you to, like, improve and enhance in your game? I think it's just at, at this point it's just mastering this offense and, and knowing exactly what, what we're doing. And I feel like I'm there now. You know, you have had the off season, had, um, you know, 90 95 percent of the installs in now so um i think now it's just making sure everybody's comfortable with what we're doing seems like the nfl is talking about responding to 12 personnel more by stan and nickel is that something you guys are pretty aware of and preparing for as you go into the season i know you've talked a lot about doing a lot of 11 stuff last year you guys were second in the league in 11 personnel behind the rams but with your tight end depth with some of the injuries early in the season is that something you're excited for attacking, like getting into the right play, the running game, maybe to attack people staying in nickel? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one thing. If you're in nickel and we're in 12 personnel, I mean, you should have the advantage when you run the ball. And, you know, we've had that before with, uh, you know, once, once Tyler's in the game, a lot of teams have put, 12, or have put nickel out yeah. there to our 12 personnel just because of the pass threat that he is. And so, but when you do that, you've got to be able to run the ball because, uh, I mean, you've got the size advantage. So we've heard reports that Ryan Finley struggled earlier, but he's been doing a lot better recently. Like, what do you think has led to his improvement? I th- it's just time in the system. I mean, you're you're a rookie. I think when you yeah. first get here, you gotta try to figure out how how to, this whole thing works. And um, you know, Ryan's done well. He's got he's got all the skills that you want, and so uh, Ryan's gonna be just fine. 
Talk about uh, Damian Willis and just how he's like progressed overall in camp so far. Yeah, it's an another guy. It's like he's got tools. He's got stuff that you feel like you can really work with. And I mean, he's impressed. Um, I think he's he's done great. You know, when, when the ball has come his way, he's, he knows where he needs to be. And so uh, it's another guy. Wants to use these preseason games. But we'll see you know, how these guys show out. One of my favorite throws to watch you execute is throwing to Tyler Eifert when you can see the linebacker's nameplate. <laughs> What's your favorite throw to make? That's a good one. I mean, <laughs> when... Uh, the number of balls you see him pick off somebody's back is just... Yeah, he's talented. You know, it's one of the things we feel like just with with guys like him and AJ and TB and, and all these guys we got, you just got to give them a chance and they'll make the play. You know, that, that's, that's one of them when you can get down in the red zone and either throw a high ball to Tyler in the back of the end zone or um, throw deep to AJ. Yeah. Hey there, this is Anthony Cazenza with the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. Thanks for listening to our show. You are currently hearing from some of the major Bengals figureheads, including head coach Zach Taylor, quarterback Andy Dalton, running back Travion Williams, wide receiver Josh Malone, offensive lineman Billy Price, and linebacker Jermaine Pratt. These interviews were conducted after a recent training camp practice by OBI co-host John Sheeran. We hope you enjoy the interviews and continue listening to our show. And I'm from Two Pump, game day, first game as a rookie. I'm living out a childhood dream. It's right around the corner, so. You're going to get a lot of reps in this game? Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a big time game, so I'm excited. Um, Ready to take it off and ready, you know, take off and, and show the team, show the organization what they what they invested in. So you got a red Gatorade. Uh huh. It's oh, a good yeah. choice. Yeah, good choice. <laughs> Actually, my favorite flavor. They just my, I, I like fruit berry. I mean fruit punch at first, and then they added berry to it. So fruit punch and berry. Yeah, I haven't had Gatorade in a long time. Man. Exactly. Gonna have to get on that. Uh huh. So you're here with your with the coach you worked with. Yeah. At A&M. Literally just walked by yeah. when I was walking up. <laughs> yeah. yeah coach are, are a lot of your responsibilities the same, seeing as it's the same sort of offensive line coordinator? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, and it's crazy because some of the calls that we that we make are kind of dissimilar to the ones that um, and um, you know I'm so thankful for that system that they brought in because at first we were true spread, and then um, Coach Fisher came in and you know Coach Turner State and he brought in a pro star offense. So you know all that that we did last year is exactly similar to what we're doing here now. How would you describe Turner as a, as a coach, as a mentor? Like, what was like would be like the one word that you would use to describe him? Guru, because <laughs> he is he that man and the knowledge that he has of of the game is absolutely phenomenal. You know, he he knows the in and outs, and I feel like he knows what's coming before it comes, just because of his knowledge of the game. And um, you know, he's he's well prepared in any setting and uh, against anybody that we're playing. He knows who they are and what they are and what they're gonna do. So. What's been your biggest challenge, I guess, adjusting? Because you, you have your same offensive line coach, but what's been your biggest challenge just adjusting to this offense as a rookie? Oh, it's just a different terminology. Um, you know, it's still the same pro star offense that, that we did last year, but it's a whole lot more information, a whole lot more different things we have to go through. So I definitely say, also I say details too, because the little things come in, the little nuances make a big difference in what you do and what your assignment is on each play. So just definitely focusing on those details. You are pretty good as a pass protector back in college, uh -huh. and we had, we had, now you have Giovanni Bernard as a teammate, and he's a really good one as well. Has he given you any tips and advice on how to really improve in that area? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. We all bounce ideas off each other. Yeah, him and Joe, you know, they've been great mentors. They've been great, you know, veterans in, in, in their approach and in, in helping me and Rodney and us rookies uh, really help our and take our game to another level. So, you know, in any situation in like pass protecting, you know, they tell you know, they told us different situations and, and how they learned and how they better their self from their game time situation. So um, just little things that they're teaching us on. There's a new rule emphasis that we've heard about, the crowd of the helmet rule for the runner. We saw that called in the Man, first preseason that game. That is crazy. And I mean, you growing up, I mean, it's just a natural, it's just a natural motion yeah, you for you to protect low, right? yourself and, and do that. But I mean, it's at the end of the day, you know, the game evolves day by day, you know, but all they're trying to do is protect us as runners and protect the defenders. But it's just something that we have to be prepared for and just keep in the back of our mind so we can kind of, you know, shy away from it. So. Is it something that you've worked on keeping your head up, or is it just? I like mean, it's just—it's nothing that you really just work on. But yeah. I guess it's just something that you just have to adjust to. Yeah. I mean, it's just the game changes literally every year, so it's just something that you're gonna have to adjust to, and uh, just kind of have to kind of go as you go. So I'm guessing preseason is a good time for for guys to go out there and really kind of get their feel for it, and, and I mean, we learn from it. Like we've seen that call. I mean, so I'm sure that running from now on out, he'll he'll know and he'll learn, you know, learn from that situation. So. He was in Cincinnati last year, right, Brian Hill? Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. 
You took you took his number actually. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the number's got a lot of work here. Uh, at the stadium. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. <laughs> it seems like you've been doing really well in training camp. Do you think that's because of Jim Turner and the similar offense, or what do you think has helped you? Yeah, definitely. I definitely give out a kudos to the coach, Coach Taylor, and uh, Coach Singleton, my running back coach. And they um, they have done a great job of coaching coaching me up and coaching us up and making sure we know what our assignment is before we go out there. Um, but definitely, I, I would say playing in the SEC really made a, a big difference because, you know, playing against those guys and that speed of that game and really getting comfortable in that system really helped me make that transition to the NFL. So. Is there anybody from the SEC who's in the NFL now who you're going to have to continue to play, obviously, as you go forward in the league that you're either – like was really good and stands out or you're looking well, forward to going out again? I'm sure everybody in the NFL knows a guy that I played with two years ago named Miles Garrett. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll be playing twice a year. Yeah, but, um, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, definitely going up against him and the Browns. Um, you know, he's a guy that has a great skill set, one of the best in the game. You know, could be arguably one of the best players in the NFL. So, you know, just going against, um, you know, players like that with their skill set and just making a difference. So. As a runner, do, do you have a, a guy that you emulate off of just as, a, as your overall game is in, in general or just as a runner, who's like a running back that you like look up to and like try to just take off notes and emulate from? Um, you know, I don't like, I don't too much like this, um, really compare my game to anybody, but I kind of would say I'm a come out with my skill set because I can definitely run the ball and, um, you know, I wasn't able to really display what I can do in the past game, you know, um, last year. With um with what we were doing, but uh, definitely now with this system, I definitely be able to showcase what I can do with the ball in my hands. You know, coming out of the backfield, so definitely I, I definitely say I'm from on. Rodney Anderson's back in practice. Yeah, my guy. Is that a pretty Your exciting guy. moment for that running back room? Yeah, for, of course. You know, Rodney he, he came in. You know, with me, we both got drafted this year, and uh, you know, I've been knowing Rodney for a long time, and I'm um, just see him overcome his adversity with his knee and uh, get back healthy and ready to play. So I'm excited to have him back in the uh, running back room and see where that goes. You yeah. looking healthy? Oh, I've yeah. heard he's looking spry. Yeah, looking looking healthy, <laughs> looking looking good, man. He's excited. I'm excited for him. And we're excited as a running back group. So. Hey there, this is Anthony Cazenza with the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. Thanks for listening to our show. You are currently hearing from some of the major Bengals figureheads, including head coach Zach Taylor, quarterback Andy Dalton, running back Travion Williams, wide receiver Josh Malone, offensive lineman Billy Price, and linebacker Jermaine Pratt. These interviews were conducted after a recent training camp practice by OBI co-host John Sheeran. We hope you enjoy the interviews and continue listening to our show. How's the, how's the book? Hey, I'm going to take a seat. Can oh, you yeah. Can see what we can do? Like, sure. around sure. do. What's that? How's the foot? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. No reminiscing pain. Everything's good. So how, how was that? Just recovering and you know, not seeing any, anything? Just perfect 100% right now? Yeah, everything's good. There's no pain. Cool. Mm-hmm. Just kind of annoying. Yeah. Just, have you ever ever dealt with that kind of thing? I have not, yeah, unfortunately. It's, <laughs> uh, it's an, like I said, it's annoying. Every step you take, you get that. A little something, something, yeah. 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 It's just, uh, again, it's annoying. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so what are the biggest differences for you with the new offensive line coach in year two? Are you getting taught different technique, different scheme, or is it all different? Um, I mean, the, the basis of football is still the same. And right. So uh, understanding kind of the different schemes and the different things that we are doing uh, offensively as far as the concepts, um, that's a little bit different. Uh, it, it's complicated, it, it, it's complex, but it's still simplified for the offensive line. So it makes it easier for us. Um, it's either this guy or that guy. Uh, it, there's there's two combinations and there's not a lot of thinking, which makes you be able to play fast and go out there and just play confident. It's tough for a rookie offensive lineman to start. What, what would you say is like the biggest jump that you've made from from year one to year two? Uh, mentally, just understanding what NFL defenses are going to present to you, the different combinations of adjustments that they can do, and understanding that completely and well-roundedly, being able to take that and to adapt it to our offense or our scheme and what we're trying to apply. Do you do anything this off season to make sure that you're like totally healthy and everything before coming in? Well, that would be a bad question. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really bad question. So, you do your no, best. You do your yeah. best to prepare, and sometimes life has a funny way of uh, putting a pain in your foot. So, what's it been like working with a kind of tough on that one? Well, at least you didn't have to have like. Yeah. Shoulder, yeah, no, that was really nice. I will say yeah. that. So you prepare your ligaments and your joints and everything. You do it, like I said, you do everything as best as possible. Prepare for the load and everything that you're about to go and do. And 
you do what you can control. Yeah. What's it been like working with uh, Mike again? Jordan? Yeah. Um, great. I mean, he's a, a young kid. He's a sponge. You know, the mentality he's taking in is to be a sponge and to absorb everything that's being thrown at him. Uh, playing in three different positions right now, center, guard, both guards, and Coach Turner just doing his job to figure out who the best five are. Um, takes you back to old times at Ohio State, and it's, uh, again, you can see his growth, and he's doing a tremendous job. Had some conversations with Willie Anderson on Twitter about how NFL coaches and offensive line rooms just don't have enough time to teach like skills and, and develop individual techniques and stuff in the NFL, and there's a lot more of a focus on scheme and, and high-level stuff. Is that something that Ben Martin's been helping with, or is it something that you feel like you could use an extra coach for? Uh, my own personal opinion, I think skill is kind of built on the field. Okay. Um, you do different drills and you do different things to work on. Um, so, for instance, like I'm, I'm, I'm lacking really badly right now with my left-hand punch, my off-hand punch, um, when people are on top of me when I'm snapping the ball. Uh, so something like that, you build that skill out on the field versus uh, you can talk about it until you're blue in the face. I could watch Travis Frederick, Pounceys, Kelsey, the whole 10 yards. But until I do, until I build that skill, it's kind of tough. Uh, but, you know, Ben Martin is a huge, huge piece of this entire puzzle of the offense. He's a brilliant mind. And it's been really nice to have him in our back pocket. Um, you know, we had a look yesterday, you know, do whatever the schematics of it was, and I can kind of spitball it off of him. And he says, no, this is why, and da 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 So um, skills built, to me, skills built on the field. And then, again, scheme and concepts are kind of in the classroom and then brought out to the field and elaborated. How's, a, how's Jonah been just on the sideline, just uh, interacting with you guys? Because you obviously suffered injuries in rookie year, but you didn't miss your entire season. So have you given him any advice on how to work through just missing this whole, the whole year? Keep his mind active. Don't don't settle or don't just don't get lost playing video games and just say, hey, I don't need to accept the playbook because I'm not going to play until next year or whatever his case is. Uh, so just, just stay active, stay with the team, stay around the guys. Um, you know, again, he's still a first-round rookie, so I know he'll be doing rookie dinner. He'll be doing some of the other kind of things, and we've kind of prepared him for those things. Um, but it is just you can't stop working your mind. Again, you can start seeing some of the things, and he's an, he's an elite player. Guy played at Alabama. He's seen some of the top pass rushers, et cetera. So just continue to push mentally, and then once OTAs next year, you'll get back out there, or whatever his timeline is, and uh, just do what you can. Stay so the offense line is pretty young right now. Do you see yourself ascending right now as a leader because you have a lot of undrafted guys working on that second team and a lot of the positions, a lot of flux um, right now? I kind of, as I touched on a second ago, I got I got some work to do. Um, just I got to do a couple of skill things. I missed a week and a half of camp, so um, I kind of lean on right now. John Jerry, Bobby, Bobby Hart, especially. Uh, he's Bobby, somebody who again he's brilliant minded, a guy who has a lot of football knowledge, a lot of football experience, and somebody who can see things and kind of. Again, piggyback and get us on the right page if I perhaps miss uh, a backside safety that's down or whatever. So um, I'd always say Bobby Hart right now, John Miller, John Jerry. Uh, those are kind of the guys who are more vocal guys who are really the rocks of the room right now as I continue to catch back up from this in a week and a half. You seen Jonah's spreadsheet? I was, I was breakdown of pass percentages and stuff. Yeah, yeah I, we talked about it on his rookie dinner. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing we got guys who do that here. Oh, you do have guys that do that next. Yeah. So you wouldn't so, consider doing that at all? Me? Yeah. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go and watch what he does. His, and the guy who does that stuff breaks down the films based yeah. on bull rush, spin move, club, those kind of things. Yeah. We have all that. Jonah doesn't have to work that hard. Yeah. What's the hardest block for you to execute versus your best block Block you feel most confident in? I know you're um, talking about the left-hand punch. Yeah, right now, so I think the, uh, a zero nose, uh, I know when we play Baltimore and we play Pittsburgh, kind of a zero nose right now, especially with those big bodies. And again, you know, Brandon Williams, 340, <laughs> according to his roster weight. Um, big dudes. Uh, Cam Hayward and other kind of guys. So just the zero with the two-way go, those are kind of the tough ones for me. Uh, just, again, you've got, you're have got on an island because they're taking the guards out with the tackles. And right. It's a man's block. Um, and then uh, the easiest block for me right now is I've developed a, a pretty good consistency with a reach block. Um, change some technique, watch some guys, and uh, anytime we're doing some of the outside zone work, it's a, a lot better than I was last year. So it's going to be a huge improvement. And it's you guys be, are and you guys are doing more more zone with the with the ram scheme. Would you say you prefer doing that zone scheme or you prefer going like man, man and gap? And um, I think I think the NFL prefers the whole zone right. aspect of it right now, and I think that 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 you see that more often than you see the one off plays where it's man blocking and and some of the pin pull schemes. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just, I, th I think what makes the Rams uh, offense so unique is, is the compliments based on it and the compliments when I say, I'm like, 
routes on pass protections or routes on play action pass and some of the different things that coordinate and make it easier for offensive linemen. So if you bring a guy to me, it makes it easier versus I have to go run another nine yards to go get that guy. Right. So, and I think that's what you'll see, especially with the Rams offensive line. Those guys are highlighted so well because of the different things that are going on. So I think that really is uh, what's going to be a difference, and a lot of people are going to see that this year. Have you had to block Carl Lawson at all in camp? I heard that they were moving him inside on some nickel stuff. Um, uh, Carl, no. Um, I haven't had to block him. Um, don't really know which, what particular stuff you're talking about. But I thought I heard that they were trying to get him one on one with See, guards. Maybe birds talking. <laughs> birds talking too much. Okay. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, man. Um, no, I just I don't I haven't had to block Carl. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I can't speak on his behalf, but I know he looks looks pretty damn good. Gino's still the toughest to block in practice. Uh, when Gino when Gino turns it on, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Once again, you've been listening to one in a series of recent Bengals interviews courtesy of co-host John Sheeran. He recently spoke with members of the Cincinnati Bengals, including head coach Zach Taylor, quarterback Andy Dalton, running back Travion Williams, wide receiver Josh Malone, offensive lineman Billy Price, and linebacker Jermaine Pratt. John was joined by other members of uh, both CincyJungle.com as well as other Bengals podcasts, but this is a pretty exclusive set of interviews that we bring you on our podcast. We thank the Cincinnati Bengals for the opportunity to speak with all of these members of the team, and we thank you for listening to this set of interviews. We'll continue to bring you more of this type of material throughout the rest of the preseason, regular season and into the off season. Thanks for listening.